Excellent. Um, so you brought it up of the, the question about um, affordability and um, particularly when it comes to, you know, if, if you're an older individual and you are on a fixed income or your, you know, your um, money earning opportunities have changed the older you get based on whether you're working or not. Um, how does uh, Vitality Society kind of address that challenge and what potentially can we think about in regards to um, programs or ways to reach out to seniors uh, to help with combating loneliness um, while keeping in mind the challenges that they might have in regards to income? Right, so for us, we wanna do that through partnerships. We wanna do that through partnerships with the YMCA. We wanna do that in the area agencies on aging. I mean, we wanna form partnerships with these organizations that are already in contact and already support a population of more moderate means. So by virtue of forming mm -hmm. partnership with these organizations, we hope to reach a population that perhaps is harder to reach in many ways. So what we do with our partners is we have a group discount pricing. So our retail price, if you come in through the front door of the platform referred from any friend or family member, which is how we've grown as fast as we have, is $29.99 a month. So that's $30 and our average member again takes five classes a week. So they're taking 20 classes a month and paying $30. So it's about $1.50 a class for the highest quality um, instruction and experience and service. So our members feel like that's very moderately priced. That being said, we know there's a population of people who can't pay that. And so through the partnerships, we have a group price that we form um, for these purposes so that if you are able to bring in your organization, your area aging office or your um, local YMCA, we are able to offer discounted price of $19.99 a month. So if we keep with the same logic, that brings the cost to a class to any one person down to a dollar. So it less it being totally free, which is pretty impossible to sustain the highest quality service and experience we stand for, um, it is the most affordably priced. They have an option to attend over 60 classes a month, but the likelihood is people have spent been more like 20 classes, so it's a dollar a class. And that's something we're very proud to offer and we feel we uniquely offer the quality and caliber of what we do at a very accessible price to the organizations who could reach the broadest base of seniors who really could benefit equally, if not more from who we serve. Mm -hmm. So um, with your experiences, not just with your organization, but your experiences in um, the senior communities and, and, and the work that you've done, um, what do you think what do you think your organization can show or demonstrate to policymakers and community leaders to let them know about the needs of the elderly population, not just um, before the pandemic, but currently during the pandemic? What are some of the things that um, you've experienced that would be beneficial for those individuals, uh, such as the community leaders or policymakers, to help improve the lives of seniors? I love that. So I sat on the New York City Department of the Aging Not-for-Profit Board for a number of years. I sat on Mayor Bloomberg's Age-Friendly Commission and participated at the United Nations. And I've always been enamored by those that study um, this business. And it's a perfect time that those that study um, and understand it at the depth we all need to know um, are working hand in hand with the practitioners like myself. So this is a really a collaborative effort with tremendous sense of urgency. So while studying extensively, like adding more metrics and understanding by what degree we combat social isolation, that's critically important and work that I want to do. But it's so much more important that I grow the membership so more people could benefit. So I need to work and do that simultaneously. So by working with academia, um, practitioners such as myself could get really good analytical data so we can do what we're doing better. It's a partnership and I see a huge opportunity where you can help us study what we're 
doing or we're trying to do so we can do it even better. And then we can help inform and guide your research so that way everybody knows what to study. So um, I do believe that it's really an opportunity for tremendous collaboration and exploration and real optimization for what academically is possible and what operationally in the industry has to happen. Absolutely. Um, so, so you have several different programs um, through Vitality Society. Um, and you've created that sense of community among the members that, that participate. Um, have there been, you know, beyond the, the wellness programs, have there been other things that you have been doing to help combat loneliness um, through your platform? Um, and what, what sort of examples might you be able to share? Absolutely. So we have a few. So before and after each class, we have about 10 minutes of time where members can come on and get to know other members and our coaches, which has been a lovely mm -hmm. way for people to make um, virtual connections. And yes, it was a few days ago in one of our classes, we had 12 states of the United States represented, as well as another country, Germany. So it was delightful and wonderful, especially right now, going into a very um, interesting election day that people get to meet other people. There's no shortage of, of activity happening in any one community. And now people get to see it, hear it, feel it, understand it from a very um, personal perspective of another member. So it one, one day it was snowing in New Mexico. There were fires in California. There were riots in Chicago. I mean, every which way people were learning and engaging with other members and exploring what was happening in various different places throughout the United States. And that was very interesting and fulfilling. The second way we do it is we have a tremendous amount of groups on our platform. So by one example, we have a solo agers um, community and that we have a foremost expert on the subject and she leads a discussion group the last Sunday of every month. And consistently we see some of the same people and then the group is always growing, but there is this sense of community that is forming around this opportunity to realize that I consider myself to be a solo ager, whether you're widowed, never got married, never had kids, People define it differently and join for different reasons, but they have a community to speak to and explore these topics and subjects. In the same way, we did um, a program for Breast Cancer Awareness Month last month, and we had a speaker from Sloan Kettering, a physician from Sloan Kettering, and women who either have dealt with breast cancer or are caregivers to family members and friends who are cancer, um, breast cancer survivors or fighters, um, or just generally want to become more aware and have a general sense of concern about um, breast cancer. And this is a community that was around this content. And we do that quite frequently and, and we do that quite well. Another example is um, our enrichment program. We have an art class that's every Saturday. And we have um, the consistency of a community of people that grows over time that come to specific classes. So communities form around different classes. So they post their artwork between classes in one of our groups, the artist gallery online. And it's been beautiful and wonderful for members to comment on each other's works. And we even did a gallery opening evening where everybody got to bring their friends and family. They dressed in black, presented their work. So they become um, a, um, a part of a community of artists within our virtual platform. Another wonderful example is we have um, Vitality University, which is a peer-to-peer -peer community exchange. So we just wrapped up a month long session. Our last one was on viruses and vaccines by one of our members who's a PhD. And she's in as part of a group uh, called the Villages, a not-for-profit organization with chapters all over that help seniors who remain in their homes and want to remain connected and supported and um, enriched. And so um, she was one of our members. She invited her family and friends and fellow villagers. And then 
our community circled around her and around this topic of virus and vaccines. So she thanked us for the opportunity to really keep her mind sharp and her knowledge current to present to so many people on a topic that's so timely and uh, for so many people to understand. So here was a group of people on Sunday evening gathering around her expertise. And that really is a woman who is a recent widow um, and now she has this incredible community of people who are aware of her expertise or interested in what she has to say. And she's so proud and excited and delighted to share. So we have community forming on so many dimensions um, and it just depends what you wanna do on the platform. A group is there for you. 